Welcome and thank you for joining this lunchtime webinar with WaterAid and Mary James Gill. My name is Anna Nilsdotter and I'm the Chief Executive of WaterAid Sweden. WaterAid is an international organization working to provide everyone everywhere with clean water, sanitation and hygiene. And since our start in 1981, we have provided more than 28 million people with clean water and more than 29 million people with sanitation. So we at WaterAid are so proud to present our speaker today, Mary James Gill. She is a politician, lawyer and human rights activist. She's currently serving as Executive Director of Centre for Law and Justice, a research-based policy and advocacy organisation in Pakistan. She's also the founder of Pakistan's first advocacy campaign, Sweepers Are Superheroes, to outline horrific attitudes and working conditions of workers in sanitation. So, very welcome, Mary. So, you have worked with sanitation workers for a long time, and you're a lawyer by training. So, how, how come you ended up working with this issue and this group of people? Uh, thank you very much, Anna. First, I'd like to thank you, uh, Water Aid Sweden, uh, Anna Lynn Foundation, and everyone involved in this trip and making this happen. Um, Yes, it's it's very uh, interesting, rather surprising for people that how come uh, coming from this legal background, a pr uh, practicing lawyer, and then you know ending up working uh, with these workers, and now uh, of course um, this organization and campaign has been internationally recognized. So of course it it's has a story that I would like to share for for the audience as well. But it's it's not that. Uh, it started, you know, very recently. The the thought of how these workers are being discriminated. It started back in 2015. I was member of parliament then, and uh, uh, my colleague, uh, who is also our lead researcher and uh, our deputy director, Asif Akil, uh, I got to meet him in 2015. I was I was working on different human rights issues. I was I was mainly working on gender and community development, uh, especially people coming from religious minorities. Uh, but this specific issue drew my attention when uh, there were certain advertisements, job advertisements coming in, specifically for sweepers or sanitation workers. There was a clear mention of you know, that people coming up, you know, persons belonging to religious minorities will, will be accommodated. And there was this this kind of advertisement that, you know, there, there's a big hue and cry that this, why only Christians or, you know, uh, people from religious minorities are required to be sweepers. And this is, this is how his research work uh, made me realize that this is this is a sector of people from my community they come from this background uh, and they are working there's a big representation in sanitation sector and how come they they got neglected and they get discriminated because they come um from um, a certain religious community so i was able to cheap you know pick it up with the chief minister at that time he's now the prime minister of pakistan shahbaz sharif so i you know, requested him that this is a policy problem, and we identified that in the policy document it is written that only uh, the the condition or criteria for sanitation worker is that only persons belonging to religious minorities shall be accommodated. And this was very interesting to see that how how this this all ended up in the uh, in the policy documents and how this this was specific provision, and we still are struggling with that. But then, you know, this this was only one part of uh, 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 the work we, we did. And then we started making people realize, especially people in government, that this is, uh, they, this, this is an important work, but there should be no discrimination based on the religion. Uh, but of course, the, the research we did, and, uh, and then this in 2017, this was a horrific death of another uh, Christian supervisor. He was Irfan Masih. Uh, it was... Uh, holy month of Ramadan, it, uh, people were fasting and uh, he went down like, you know, like rest of the sanitation workers. Not many people knew by that time that sewers are being cleaned manually right. know, uh, uh, in, in Pakistan. And it was a part of an interior part of uh, our Sindh province. So his subordinates went down, they got gassed, uh, they fainted. Uh, he went down to rescue them. 
and he was able to rescue them but he also fainted in the process because of the poison gases and normally the workers in pakistan they do not have any who who work manually cleaning the sewers they have no safety equipment they go down with their naked bodies they have no gloves or mask uh, so he also got poisoned but then he was taken to the hospital uh, and the doctor refused to touch him because he was all covered with the sweet water he said that you first clean the body and then i'll treat him so meanwhile he he right he died right away on the stretcher that was the first incident hugely reported in the media and when i got to know about it so this is that was the exact moment uh, when i realized that this is not just the discrimination in work based on the religion or the caste based discrimination but also how these workers lack safety and they they die and this is this is just one example they get gassed every day um, uh, and and incidents of deaths are hardly reported in any media so this is this is how it started in 2017 and we dedicatedly um started thinking that what to do about it i was i was still member then and then there was my last member year, of parliament that was member of parliament right. at that time then i went to the us for a state fellowship program i i i read a lot about how african americans were discriminated the same way how sanitation workers in in the us and how they were able to you know raise profile of this uh, this occupation especially the memphis strike it was a big big uh, you know inspiration for 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 this work and how i am a man campaign actually helped those sanitation workers realize that this is this is this should be a dignified work that it's an important work but in south asian region it's very important to understand that how people how movements in other south asian regions like india and bangladesh they they have been struggling with this idea that these workers because they come from a certain caste uh, untouchable backgrounds so they are discouraged and they are rather asked uh, to leave this work and do some other decent work so this is not considered a decent work but when i came back i came back with the support that banning manual scavenging for these workers or discouraging them not to do this work is not the solution right. somebody's got to do this job yeah. so is, is that when you started your campaign yes this yeah. is this is how i was thinking that how it should right. be it should be a campaign and how we should take this message forward and put it b- b- before the society that how they are being discriminated not just at the state level or at the society level but but as a labor right issue so so in it started you know in 2017 for for next two years there was a lot of reading and research interviewing people talking with them and seeing that what was their the, their issues but then formally it was launched in april 2019 but it started as a social media campaign because in 2017 i realized that the major major problem was that there was they they were invisible they there was not even a single footage a photograph of sewer cleaners working in pakistan most of the footages or videos were from from india and bangladesh so they they were quite invisible on social media and it was a big platform even you would google on you know right now if you google all the images will be coming from our campaign so now people can actually see how they're working without making any hue and cry that they had the worst in human working conditions so people by looking at the pictures and that is another story how we convince those workers to get pictured uh but these images really help you know shaking this society's uh you know um, conscience that these workers need attention right so you started talking about the discrimination the many problems the dangers of being a sanitation worker and as a politician what response did you get did you have political friends who joined you or were you all alone not until i went out of the parliament and when this campaign started you know it was at its peak uh, late 2019 when people actually started embracing it even from my own political party and we we got this idea of having a dignity award ceremony every every year where we would invite people from different you know influential backgrounds like politicians a member of parliament um civil society policy makers uh government officials so we would invite you know sanitation workers 
and uh, we would also invite people from different backgrounds and people usually they don't want even to have a look at sanitation workers because they are treated as untouchables people don't want to shake hands with them or see with see them or you know uh, eat with them but through this ceremony we tried to break this taboo and they were mingled they they right. they could talk with each other and yeah. we were we, you know, they would give away awards to those workers yeah. so we put that criteria that every year we'll give three we'll you know select three or four workers working in sanitation sector for more than 30 years so we would honor their service we would recognize them in front of all the the audience yeah. so this really help people you know realize that this is yeah. so this is our third year now and we 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 have uh, you know uh, there's so much progress and we have been able to get so many people from the parliament and other sectors who have joined hands and right. who have actually become friends of supers or superheroes yeah. that's fantastic results so how did people react when you started you know mingling politicians with sanitation workers if they were so discriminated against before what were the reactions from local media and frankly in in the beginning people even did not know that this is how sewers were being cleaned so i would talk to my friends especially from you know uh, elite backgrounds let's say that or highly educated or qualified they did not know that where what what would happen when they they you know flush their toilets yeah. so that was the first question that do you know what happens and there are people who literally have to clean your shit with their hands and they might die in the process so it was but but interestingly they they were so receptive of this idea and they immediately it it, it did not take me very long to convince them that we should work for them um uh, and the media i mean if i'm standing right here and you're talking about the success of supers as superheroes and it was recognized by anna lent and then now a french human rights prize last year it's only because how people embrace this campaign and it became people's campaign if you go to our page so there are so many responses to the images and people so now it's it's i mean four years ago you could not even think calling a chura Uh, that is uh, equivalent to an n word uh, a sweeper um an untouchable a, a superhero but now it's taken for granted so many municipalities have embraced this word and now calling them hero is part of the narrative right. by the media i mean still we have very low representation but at least if some incident happens now if there is some gassing or you know someone you know dies due to that incident at least there is some public you know outrage we can see and and people can actually demand from the government that yeah. there should be there should be something to do yeah. to what do about that. working conditions have they improved these years uh, if we say no on part of you know all we have been able to achieve so far is that we have been able to shake their consciousness we have been able to make them realize even the government officials that these conditions are inhuman but the problem is it's not just the working conditions i mean they they they, they have no safety equipment they have um no medical assistance they they i mean there is no regular blood screening that clearly shows that you know our research says that most of them are uh suffering with asthma or hepatitis or you know several other skin disease it's it's very very common and right. people who get gas they get some permanent sort of you know reaction on their body their face but still i mean even even workers never you know talked about the safety this is this is something very uh you know they they were ashamed they this is why the shame and stigma actually uh made them silent uh now they can they can actually think that their life is important and safety first is something we we haven't try to yeah. raise awareness with uh so s- same is the case with the with the government you know officials at least there is some some willingness it's still still it's not part of the mainstream you know narrative and it's we still lack political will uh because our policies do not recognize sanitation sector and hazardousness of these workers the vulnerability of these workers so so for us it's it's a matter of uh policy uh labor policies we our our research thesis on uh reviewed all the you know labor policies and and we think that it it will be impossible until we include them 
uh, as as hazardous sector as a hazardous occupation in in the labor policies then we can definitely that there is going to be some legal framework that is very very important and still missing until then uh, i mean it seems a far fetched idea to you know materialize right. uh, do you feel hopeful what I do you, what do you think like if you were to select one thing that you hope for that would really take you forward what would that be those people stories their resilience i mean every time i meet them i they give me hope because they they make me motivated that there still need to work and and sometimes yeah i'm i'm most of the times i'm the most optimistic uh, optimistic person in a room sometimes i i think we haven't done enough there's so much work still to be done but when whenever we do something like we have a gathering we are able to bring them together we are able to you know communicate with them and we are able to resolve very petty issues that that matter a lot to them uh i feel like we still have hope and gradually we have made uh, so much progress in in a very little time and this is this has always been all only been possible because of the social media we still i mean we have nothing we we are very small organization it's it's a voluntary initiative there hasn't been much uh, resources available to this uh, uh, to this campaign but the the power of social media has made things happen whenever some issue comes up we put it online so our followers it it from un water to water aid international several other organizations local media channels celebrities they follow our campaign and it somehow you know helps us raise raise the awareness um so this is this has been a different kind of model that you know other organizations follow um so we have been able to use the the the, the power of social media to yeah. to the extent that it has uh, at least made people aware of the plight of these issues right do you think that the global community highlights this issue enough or do you have any particular actors or institutions which you would like to you know work more with these issues i mean when we started we so it started as a social media campaign and uh, it started with facebook and facebook has a very very important role how we were able to reach out to masses at large but then we moved to twitter after a few few months and twitter had a different kind of audience and very serious actors and you know global community they they took notice of it they took notice of because all the content was prepared by me individually i mean i was uh, taking care of all the pages as i am still uh, working uh, on the campaign myself but they actually used this platform to to see that there there is an because before that it was only about in south asian region it was only about mostly india and bangladesh and issues of the sanitation workers in uh, uh, these two countries were more visible and pakistan was invisible we okay. literally put the map uh, pakistan on the map of issues of sanitation workers interestingly the global partners uh, global organizations have also taken notice of this issue during very recently i mean it's only the first initial assessment came in 2019 just you know during the time when we had our first research and now it's being used uh, as um, as one of the four research studies from across the world to profiles at city level profiling of sanitation workers uh, and water aid international especially has been um, very very helpful and supportive of this campaign that actually helped us uh you know uh, raise profile of this campaign through through other other actors communication um, communication definitely Policy andre work yes andre from water aid uh, uk he has he was one of the few people who contacted us you know uh, through twitter he also sent out his message when we were collecting messages for uh, dignity and safety of those workers and then you know he nominated us to water aid uk Sweden and how uh, we were uh, awarded this Annalyn prize and of course this prize actually you know helped us access to other other uh, global organizations um uh, ILO I think has been one of uh, and you know uh, including especially under initiative for sanitation workers it's a global joint initiative of uh, WHO ILO World Bank water aid and snb uh, and it has initial support of additional support of uh, bill and Gla- melinda gates foundation and this is the first of its uh, own kind initiative globally 
looking at issues of sanitation workers holistically. And we are so proud to be part of this initiative. And I think this is the strength of this, this very small organization, very small campaign having access to, to larger, you know, global partners. Yeah. Um, and, um, and we are currently, you know, uh, that these are these two, two projects of empowering sanitation workers. And uh, uh, we are also expanding our research in, uh, across, across Pakistan because Pakistan is very, very young in this issue. We still don't have any data. Um, we, we do not have much information uh, about the, you know, how the unions work. So we, through the help of Water International, we are, we are implementing partners of these all, both yeah. projects. Yeah. And during these years that you have been campaigning, we were also hit by the COVID pandemic. How did that affect you and your work and, and the sanitation worker situation in Pakistan? You would be surprised. My people might laugh, but we found it as a blessing in disguise for us. Why was because, that? Because this is the very specific time when we were able to make people realize we didn't have to, even if for before COVID, we had to people educate on PPE first. Because of the COVID, everyone was aware of what PPE is with reference to doctors and nurses and other paramedic staff. So people knew that doctors could not function without PPE, they needed it. But then we connected it with sanitation workers and we said, look, those people are still you know, collecting your waste and cleaning your sewer without PPE. Will you explain PPE for the audience? All right. So PPE is personal protective equipment. Right. So everyone, every you know, worker or even with the doctors, if you're working in an infectious environment, you need to protect yourself first. And for that, you have a kit. It can be, it can be, you know, in, in case of COVID, you see doctors, you know, with full-fledged hazmat suits. Uh, and they, they, in fact, in Pakistan, many doctors in many hospitals refuse to work in quarantine centers without those suits. They said that we, we cannot put ourselves in danger. And then we said, all right, so here are the workers who are still cleaning. And there are chances that, the, that COVID infection is in the sewer lines and in the waste they're collecting every day. So how you are treating them? So it was a very clear message and people could understand what we meant. And we were actually able to recognize them as frontline workers. People would literally shower flowers on them wherever they would really? go. Really? Especially during, you know, COVID. So right. uh, we had this um, national call. It was part of the global call. Uh, for protection of sanitation workers. Uh, CLG was also part of it. Then we had a national call. We put it out. They, it, they, they, it had so many endorsements. It resultantly ended with the Punjab Assembly, that is the provincial legislative body, uh, to declare them as frontline workers. But did that in practice change their safety, working conditions? To some extent, yeah. especially in hospital facilities, it was easy because they were already providing protective equipment to doctors and right. nurses. But in other sector, and, and so many workers were actually working in quarantine wards, not just as sanitation staff, but also as a support staff because doctors and nurses were so afraid to go into the quarantine centers. And those workers were even administering medicine or making beds for the doctors. So, so we put it out there a case that the why why not call them frontline workers like uh, army officers and you know police officers who were working du even during the lockdown so especially the safety component we were able to highlight better during the covid time right and still we we were also able to get some support from our uh, our partners to distribute kits among at least 800 workers and it was a very good test and for the first time they got to work with with uh, gloves and mask and uh, goggles. So, so it, you know, they, they were they were very enthusiastic that for the first time they realized that they are working as important people. They are humans too. So, right. so, so yes, COVID was something uh, that helped us build our base right. to, to draw attention for so safety. You haven't touched upon the the gender dimension of this work. What does it look like with the sanitation workers? Are they both men and women? And how are they affected differently by these challenges that you describe? Exactly. And there's a very clear, you know, um, you can say dimension to, to see that. When it comes to sewer cleaners, we do not have women 
who go down the sewer lines to clean the sewers but there are women and the same you know so so there are municipalities uh, there are metropolitan corporations there are companies uh, public sector companies taking care of uh, uh, an urban uh, area sanitation but there are women who work as mostly work as sanitary workers we call them sanitary workers who work as uh, waste workers uh, who collect communal waste by assigned by the municipalities those women are and the number is very big but those women have very different kind of issues i mean women at large of course they have issues similar issues at workplace like harassment or you know uh, exploitation by their or you know by their um, officers but here specifically those women workers first this there's no line of promotion so they they'll always work as workers then the harassment they face is it has it's it's on a next level the, their supervisors they are they are very much subjected to the same kind of exploitation rather more they often complain about harassment by their by their officials but there is no such mechanism available and gender has no place in the sector there's no protection in the sector whether you talk about you know harassment committee that there is one law we have uh, harassment at workplace but it has no you know we we do not see any manifestation um in the sector and then the women are always accompanied by their male members because of the kind of work they do and because you know they they cannot do it on their own and then then there is an overlapping of issues already whether it's dignity or safety or social protection or employment security this all um you know multiplies or it, these issues are amplified when it comes to women so right. i think i think and and there hasn't been any attention to to them as well right so uh, as we are approaching the end of the seminar if i were to ask you last question if you look ahead to the future let's say 5 years ahead um what what's your vision what what do you hope for the sanitation workers of pakistan with your very successful campaign what have you achieved and where are you i think for for uh, next 5 years is a very good time to see how i want to see it and for me the vision for 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 next few years is to focus on organizing those workers so there is a sweepers association pakistan we have started working on for past 2 years so the idea is that i cannot speak for them for for the rest of my life nor my organization is supposed to we are only supposed to transfer this knowledge and understanding uh, and empower them so that eventually they speak for themselves and this is the only thing i want to keep myself uh, engaged with uh, for for next few years we have had a very good start uh, we had some failures too i must admit because these these this community has never been engaged in any sort of political activity and they are always fearful of losing their jobs and pakistan is not a very pro union you know labor union uh, environment but it has several progressive laws when it comes to labor rights and especially uh, pakistan status under gsp plus uh, when it's under review uh, and labor rights has a big part we need to comply with this association will do the rest of the work and it's it's we are, we are only there to provide them guidance and technical assistance but we really want them feel empowered and it 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 will work as an oversight of or it will build a network of different unions across pakistan so that they come together they talk about their rights we are only so so then our i see our role will be lessened but they'll be the face some day one sanitation worker might be here explaining what i'm explaining so this is this is the goal right that's fantastic thank you so much for this interesting conversation and all the stories that you yet to give offered us Um I also want to thank the audience for participating in this webinar and if you want any more information on Waterade you can visit us at waterade.org thank you very much